There is a parable in Buddhist scripture about a certain Raja who presented an elephant to a group of blind men. Here is an elephant, he said, and to one man he presented the head, to another its ears, to another a tusk, to another the trunk, the foot, the body, the tail, and the tuft of tail, saying to each one, Here is an elephant. And so, when asked to describe the creature, the man presented with the head answered, Sire, an elephant is like a pot. He who observed only the ear replied, An elephant is like a winnowing basket. Presented with a tusk, another said it was like a plowshare, while he who knew only the trunk said it was like a hose. Another said the body was like a great wall, the leg the trunk of a tree, the tail a rope, and the tuft of tail a brush. It seems to me that Jesus' commandment this morning, Love one another as I have loved you, is like a rather large elephant standing in the room. For we think we know what love is, holding on to its tail or ear or tusk. But like the blind man in the parable, we do not see the entire thing. Sure, we might get glimpses of it here and there, usually in a look that seems to come directly from the heart of someone who knows us better than ourselves and still chooses to stick around. Or in those glimmers of grace when we allow ourselves to feel completely the fact that we are God's beloved just the way we are. For that is the kind of unconditional love Jesus is talking about here. The kind of love about which Shakespeare wrote, Love is not love which alters when alteration it finds. I don't know about you, but while I know and believe in that kind of love and in our own belovedness within the walls of church each Sunday, I often develop a slow leak somewhere in my memory during the week. Perhaps you too experience such memory loss, sitting in traffic, for example, or waiting in line at the store, or simply listening to the daily news on the radio. Suddenly, God's love is nowhere to be seen. Is there not at the head of each news hour, at the top of every news feed, evidence of love's absence? There's a part of me that wonders whether we are even capable of abiding in love, of being ever beloved, ever loving. Something William Blake must have considered when he wrote that telling line, and we are put on earth a little space that we may learn to bear the beams of love. For we're not talking about the kind of love that comes in saccharine messages on heart-shaped candies. There is no frilly lace or single red rose here. Love one another as I have loved you. These words come tumbling down through the ages to us from the night they were first spoken the night before Jesus would lay down his life for his disciples, for his friends, for us. And as if he intuited we would not understand what he meant, Jesus clarifies, greater love than this no one has, that one lay down his life for his friends. I have to wonder if any of us really know or practice that kind of boundless love. I'd like to believe that I would have the strength of character to lay down my life for the one I love most, but I cannot say with certainty what I would do in the heat of the moment. And as we know from Jesus' words from the cross, we are not only talking here about laying down our lives for each other, but also whispering forgiveness into the air as we bleed. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. In countless conversations, we use this little word, love, as if it possessed a clear and agreed-upon definition. We think love is about kindness and tenderness, peace 
and pleasure. And while it can be any or all of those, really, we're only holding on to the elephant's tail. For love, in all of its radiance and complexity, also encompasses surrender and witness, vulnerability, and yes, sacrifice. The poet-prophet Khalil Gibran wrote, Love assigns you to his sacred fire that you may become sacred bread for God's sacred feast. Jesus loved and lived out the notion that all are welcome at that feast, whether friend or foe. Indeed, he would not even have made a distinction between the two to begin with. In our first lesson this morning, we heard witness to just this kind of love. When the Holy Spirit falls upon all who hear the word, not only the circumcised believers, not only the Jews, the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. God's love does not pick and choose. God's love is for all, Gentile and Jew, black and white, the migrant and the settled, cisgendered, transgendered, gay and straight. And every child of God is entitled to that birthright because, well, either we are all children of God or none of us are. Love one another does not mean simply to love those who love us. It means to love also the unknown, the unfamiliar, the uncomfortable, people who may look differently than we do, think differently, believe differently. This is the paradox of the kind of boundless love Jesus is asking of us that we may each journey to those places where we have etched into our hearts division and separation and see that beyond our self-imposed borders of love is love. Beyond our self-imposed borders of love is love. And this he neither suggests nor recommends. Jesus commands us. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Enter one very, very large elephant. Try not to notice, feign blindness if you can, and whatever you do, well, don't talk about it. There's just one thing. An elephant is pretty hard to ignore. The proverbial elephant in the room is so big and so obvious that you wonder how anyone can't see it. But of course, beneath our feeble attempts at pretending it isn't there, to dismiss it or refuse to acknowledge it, everyone knows deep down that the elephant is there. The elephant is always the truth. And as followers of Jesus, we refuse to ignore the truth. We choose to see, to know, to act, to love. Each time we somehow do find each other, each time we somehow manage to love each other, each time we forgive one another, we create a little spark. And those sparks are the lasting fruit that Jesus asks us to bear, trumpeting wisdom into the dark room that is this imperiled planet where we grope and stumble, trying to read each other's heartbeats like Braille. There is an elephant in the room, one that embodies love, and we need to talk about him. We may not be able to perceive all at once the entirety of one who is so much larger than us, but we can tell each other about what we do know, we can talk about our experience of Jesus and his astonishingly big love. We can name that enormous and deep love for each other, describe it, give voice to the great joy of knowing Jesus, the light of the world, the way, the truth, and the life. With the crucifixion looming on the horizon, Jesus gathered his disciples one last time and said and did something remarkable. He called them 
friends. No longer his students, his servants, but friends, because he had taught them everything he knew from the Father. And this he distilled into one brief and spectacular sentence. Love one another as I have loved you. My friends, this is how God's love transforms the world, not in apocalyptic lightning and thunder, but in the simple extension of love. From God to Jesus, from Jesus to you, from you to me, and from me to you, and from you to you to you, until that joyful and salvific love arrives amongst strangers. Is this not a marvelous thing? It's an act of blind faith. But then haven't we all heard that love is blind? And as our love sparks accrue, the light and love of Jesus multiplies, fills room after room, until that moment when the balance will tip, and the darkness and all our fears will fade away into love's bright flame. And there will indeed be shouts of great joy and new songs sung, trumpets sounded, and the rivers will clap their hands, and the hills ring out with joy before the Lord. Let us welcome, then, the elephant in the room, and revel in his magnificence, run our hands over the entire length and breadth of his amazing body, from curve of trunk to tip of tail, so that we might finally know and understand what love really means. Let us lay down our inadequate notions of relationship and love. Let us lay down our egos for each other. Let us lay down our fears and delusions of division. Let us lay down past hurts and grudges. Indeed, let us love one another as he loved us, laying down our lives and acts of love for each other. Amen.